you, Megan, for introducing me. My name is Marco. If you guys have yet not met me, uh, that's me. <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon, guys. Today, I want to start off by sharing a little bit more about myself. Uh, I am from Federal Way. I grew up in a household of three. It was me. I was the baby of the house. My older brother, who's five years older than me, and then my mother. And we grew up in a Christian household because of my mother's faith. So I'm very grateful for that. However, we were missing a big key part of our family, which was my father. See, my father was in and out of jail because he dealt with alcohol. He was an alcoholic. And I share this because it's a big portion of me, of who I am, because the absence of my father really taught my brother and I a lot. You see, it forced my brother and I to grow up really, really fast. And so I wanted to share this because the actions of my father, because he decided to fall into temptation of alcohol, it cost us a lot. It cost my mother a lot of pain. It cost my brother and I to grow up really fast and almost missed the whole childhood, um, especially my brother because he was the oldest. He had to take more responsibility. Me as the baby, you know, I, could, I was spoiled a little bit here and there, right? Uh, and so I wanted to share this because there's a cost to every action that we take. There's a cost to every decision that we have. And so in the passage that I have, I'm reading out of Luke 9. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up with me. I'm reading out of Luke 9, verses 18 to 27. And here we find Peter and Jesus and his disciples, all of his disciples, but Peter mainly because he's the highlight of this passage. Peter is the one that recognizes Jesus as the Messiah. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys real quick. And I'm going to be reading out verse 18. It says, one day Jesus left the crowds to pray alone. Only his disciples were with him, and he asked them, who do the people say I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say that you are one of the ancient prophets risen from the dead. But then he asked, who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah from God. Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. The Son of Man must suffer many terrible things, he said. He will be rejected by the elders and the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. He will be killed but on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Now, I want to stop right here real quick just to give you some context on why Jesus stops and tells his disciples, hey, don't tell anybody who I am, right? Like, <laughs> don't reveal my identity, okay? Because Messiahship had a really, really um, key components to this, character, like this person back in the day. And it still does today, right? But back in the day, anybody who claimed that they're a Messiah meant that victory was coming. I'm going to deliver you to victory. I'm, I'm going to be glorified. This is what was meant when someone was called Messiah. And so Jesus didn't want anybody to know who he was because people were so quick quick to follow whoever, whoever claimed victory, right? And so Jesus didn't want this. He said, I'm different. I'm a different Messiah. Because as a Messiah, they were only to bring victory, not suffering. This Messiah was different. This Messiah must suffer, be rejected, and be killed. Jesus wanted his audience to know what it really meant to follow the Messiah, right? And so this is where we get this shift in the text. Verses 23, it says, Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you yourself lost or destroyed? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of the person when he returns in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. Uh, please join me in this prayer, guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this afternoon. We thank you so much for the breath in our lungs and for waking us up this morning. We pray, Lord, that you allow us to be sensitive to your voice and to hear out your truth. We love you, Jesus, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this shift is key in the text. First, we're talking about the Messiahship of Jesus, and then he talks about what it means to be a follower. And that's what this text is going to be about. What, is it, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? What is the cost of that decision? You see, to follow Jesus, it means to deny ourselves and to pick up our cross daily. But what does that exactly mean? What does that mean, Marco? Let me break this down to you guys. There's steps to this, and Jesus gives us steps. And they're really clear. They're really clear. 
the first step is for us to turn from our selfish ways. A lot of the times in our culture, people live for themselves. People live for money. You know, they chase the bag. People live for fame and glory, and they, they'll even take it a step further and lie to their best friend, right? They'll backstab someone just so that they can come first. A lot of people find themselves living for themselves. In my case, I fell for this too. You see, part of growing up fast meant that my brother and I had to learn how to work hard. We, my brother, uh, honestly, I can't remember a day where he didn't have a job. Um, he worked ever since, the youngest I worked was when I was eight years old. And him being older, I can't, I can't remember when he didn't work. You see, when I was eight years old, we'd go uh, work with my uncle. He was a janitor. And so we'd, uh, we'd help him out. He would, my brother would do most of the work. I'd just tie up the trash bags and just leave it there so they could pick it up. <laughs> I would call it work, but I would really more lay back because I was younger. I was a baby, right? Um, but this, is, this became a bigger problem for me when I grew up because that developed my work ethic. And, uh, today, uh, I, I claim I have a good work ethic, but honestly, I, I could be lazy sometimes. The point is, is that when I uh, got licensed as a barber two years ago, I was so determined and that when I got hired into the barbershop that I am now, it was, really, it was really a toll for me because I was very prideful. You see, it takes a thousand hours to get licensed to a barber in Washington, and I finished it in six months. The uh, fastest someone ever finished it was four months. So I was building up my pride, and then this shop came looking for me, and I didn't look for it. So I felt like a beast. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm a monster. You know, no one can stop me. But the thing is that when it comes to pride and money, it's not a good equation. You see, because of my work ethic and the culture of this shop, it was, it was fast-paced. You see, if you're going to eat, if you're hungry, you're going to eat. You know, if not, just stand in the back, be on your phone. But that wasn't me. I was, I was eating. And so I was making good money. And then for the first time, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm a baller, man. Like, I'm on top of the world. I'm my own boss. I come in and leave whenever I want. And so with this culture, I began to fall in love with money. So what's my point here? My point is I began to start living for money, and I forgot to live for God. You see, I put my ministries aside. I would show up late to church. I would ignore my family, ignore my girlfriend, and it would suck because that affected everything. You see, I fell in love with money. I was living for money, and this is what it means when Jesus warns us. Deny yourselves. Deny the, the chance to live for money. Deny the chance to, you know, live for fame. Stop seeking self-glorification. Live for me. Deny yourself. So this is the first step that we had to take, but we had to take it a step further to be a true follower of Jesus, and that is to bear our cross. What does that mean? Back in the day, bearing your own cross to death was the worst humiliation you could ever have. You see, they only give this, this um, condition to the worst criminals. You would have to carry your own cross to death. And it was a one-way journey. If you saw this person, you're not seeing him again. You see, it was a one-way journey. In the same way for us, what does it mean to bear a cross today? It means Jesus was telling us to prepare to suffer, prepare to face rejection, and possibly even death. In some cultures today, people can't express their, their faith in, in Christ. Luckily, we live in a, in a country that we can. We can, but we still suffer too. It's just different. You know, a lot of times we get humiliated for being a Christ follower. We get made fun of. It's embarrassing sometimes. In high school, people would call me, my friend group would call me pastor whenever I'd come into school. I'd be like, oh, what's up, Pastor Marco? What's up? I didn't really think of it as humiliating. I thought it was kind of cool, to be honest. But uh, at the same time, I didn't want to I didn't want to take, I, like I said, I deal with pride sometimes. And I didn't want to take that in. So I was like, you know what, bro, don't, don't call me that, man. Uh, because I didn't want to, I'm still a regular person, you know. I still make mistakes. But we do have to deny ourselves and bear a cross. To bear a cross means to be prepared to face rejection. See, that wasn't humiliating for me. Humiliating for me was when I had to deny the fact that I could make money. And I had to humble myself and say, you know what, God, I miss you. You see, two years ago when I, when I was facing that, uh, that love for money, my girlfriend came up to me. She said, hey... You're not spending time with God. At first, I felt like she was telling me, hey, you're not spending enough time with me. Uh, But I realized she meant what she meant. 
You're not spending enough time with God. And I was denying everybody else. You see, in order for me to deny myself, I had to say, you know what, I'm going to leave early. I'm going to leave work early and miss the opportunity of making money and go to church and focus on my relationship with God. And so Fridays, we have our youth services at our church. And I had to, Friday is a big day for barbers or any, uh, most businesses. But Friday for us, you're making bank. You know, if you're working hard, you're making bank. And so um, I had to deny that. I said, you know what, I'm going to leave early and I'm going to go to church because I need to. I need to face I need to face this, this fact that I, I'm messing up. I'm loving money too much than I'm, I'm more than I'm loving God. And so when I would walk out, like I said, our culture at the shop was so busy and everybody there is like so money focused that when I would leave, like, Marco, you're leaving already? It's too early, Marco. Why are you leaving? Uh, where are you going, Marco? I felt so, I felt pushback. Like I couldn't leave. I felt Like, these guys were trying to punk me, honestly, because I would leave so early. Like, they would say, I wasn't wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the work. And I felt humiliated. And I would tell them, hey, man, I got to go because I'm leaving. I'm going to church. Like, oh, Marco, you go to church? I was like, yeah, bro. It's just because I'm here at the shop. I gave you the wrong impression, you know. So I had to humble myself. And I had to face that humiliation, face that rejection. Now, they they don't say nothing to me. They don't, and, and that's the good part about it. Because when we're ready to face rejection, God will come through. You know, he's not saying, yo, yo you're going you're gonna to always face rejection. No. No, there's, there's beauty in being a follower of Jesus. He's just saying be prepared for it because it could happen. And it will. It's just going to look different for us. And in, in my case, that was, that, was, that was pretty, it was hard for me. Because, like I said, I dealt with pride. So our first step is to deny ourselves, and then let's begin to bear that cross. Be ready to face that humiliation, that rejection, and be ready to suffer. And then my last step, the last step that Jesus tells us to do to be followers of him is simply to follow him. You see, some people think this is too simple. Like, oh, if you want to be a follower of Christ, you know, just follow him. Yeah, of course. You see, sometimes it gets over our head and we forget about it. A lot of times we think that as Christians, it's a one-way stop. It's a one ticket to heaven. You have this amazing encounter, and you, you get saved. You, 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 ha- you encounter Jesus, but, and then sometimes we forget. Or sometimes we just get lost in the sauce, and we forget what we're supposed to do. But what this means, what Jesus is saying, you'll follow me, it's a commitment. It's an everyday commitment. And it's why Luke emphasizes, hey, you got to pick up your cross daily. Because this is a lifestyle. This is a commitment to Jesus and his discipleship. So, I want to go ahead and sum up everything what, uh, what we just went through. What does it mean to follow Jesus? What is the cost of it? To truly follow Jesus, it means to deny ourselves, to bear our own cross, and to follow him. I want to touch on um, some verses. Jesus does say that there Like I said earlier, there's costs to every action and decision that we make. And there's a cost that we don't follow up with what Jesus says. I'm going to go back to these verses, reading out of verse 24. It says, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. That's a cost. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. That's also a cost. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but are yourself lost or destroyed? That's a cost. If anyone is ashamed of me, and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. That's also a cost. You see, because the title of Messiahship is deliverance. The title of Messiahship is glorification. You see, they were so, the, the disciples were so hyped. I could just see them being hyped about, yo, Jesus is the Messiah? I was like, I'm, I'm ready for this, right? But they weren't ready to, they, it was, this was a hard message for them to take that. What does it mean that I have to suffer, Jesus? What does it mean that I have to suffer for you? And the following, after after that, they would realize what it really meant because Jesus would teach them what it meant to be a disciple. And it's hard for us to take in sometimes too. I, I wish I could tell you living a Christian life is easy. I wish I could tell you that I, after I accepted Christ, I didn't make any more mistakes. It's not the case. I'm not perfect. 
And I don't know if standing on this platform will ever means anything, right? I can't say that I'm higher or above you. I'm not. But I do know that Jesus promises deliverance from our sins. Because as a Messiah, he will deliver us from our sins. He will deliver us to the kingdom of God. And that's verse 27. He says, I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. A lot of theologians argue about this, saying, what does this mean? It might mean that some might see the glory of God and they're in the transfiguration or when the Holy Spirit comes. But I'm not going to stand here and kind of agree with either or because there's a lot of views out there. But what I do want to highlight is the promise in here. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. He says that those who are committed to me, those who are committed to following Jesus, will eventually see the kingdom of God, right? So let us practice that. Let us practice that because I'm here with you too. I'm here ready to practice picking up my cross. I'm here ready to practice to continue to deny myself. Let let me pray for you guys. Heavenly Father, right now, we just want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for your truth. But most importantly, we ask, Lord, that you forgive us for our sins and that you be our Messiah. We ask, Lord, that you give us the strength to continue to deny ourselves every day, to continue to bear our cross and be ready to suffer for you. Because to me, to be a true follower of Jesus, it means to be fully committed to you. And I ask that you give us that strength because it could be hard. Lord, we love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.